So, hi, Mark. Uh, I'm honored to uh, I'm honored to have another uh, podcast episode with Mark Fleury, uh, who's a, a prominent angel investor and uh, uh, founder of J Boss, which he successfully sold to Red Hat. Red Hat. Yes, and he's also uh, he's also uh, right now a managing partner in Two Prime, which we're going to talk about, and he co-invested in many many different projects and just a very interesting person uh, uh, I would say to speak to on a <laughs> on a personal level right and uh, we're gonna explore different topics right now but before as a as a standard practice we're gonna uh, we're gonna throw a legal disclaimer so this content is for informational purpose only and you should not construe any such information or other material uh, as legal tax uh, investment financial or any other advice so in your uh, let, let's try to dissect the, you know, the, the major points of the financial food plan, right so what's uh, I would say what's the major goal of the project let's simplify like as much as possible right and also just for like transactions for value it's a capital formation fractional like backing of stable coins what's uh, what's the major core functionality so the third killer app of Crypto has been the ICO movement, which uh, capital formation. And there what we saw was extremely fast crypto capital formation through exchanges. So we believe that inherent to the exchanges is in fact capital formation. Call it the IEO nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to see a comeback of the ICO basically is, 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 is a simple way of putting this. Except instead of doing ICO mechanism, which is first the private dump, the private then the public, pump the public, and then dump everything, which is this envelope. It's called the pump and dump. Um, we say we would like to be able to take that into a fiat realm. Uh, today, very few projects do that in crypto. Uh, BTC, F, top five, block five, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you may have even derivatives coming in as hedging strategies. I mean not just futures for the miners, which is what miners use as producers, the, like the Chicago straight up futures, uh, but options so we can express uh, a color and, and, and derive synthetic revenue that way. Mm -hmm. uh, just like, uh, you know, just like a lending does. For example. So two prime is a FinTech company. Uh, I, I, I like to say uh, it, we position ourselves as a more of a generic product that has found the root in crypto, the, the, the solution, you know, is implemented in crypto and crypto exchanges. Um, and it's a flexible product that, you know, is all weather and important in times like this. So if you go back to crypto in general, crypto has outperformed every asset class, period. You know, gold is like a few points behind. Let's talk about oil at some point, you know, because the whole point of oil is that it's indexed on real economy, whereas Bitcoin is not. So the weakness becomes a strength. Well, I, I think it's, it is important to also mention because, because you, you uh, I think it's very natural when we talk about the ICO era, we understand that, you know, the, the pros and the cons. But I would say in the eyes of the mm, traditional retail investors, it's a very, very painful experience, right? Because like 97% of them probably like lost money, right? And there's uh, more than 80% of the ICO era's uh, projects, they turned out to be scams and not reliable and when people think about the pump and dump schemes in a speculative manner that this fashion uh is definitely uh, i would say correlated to negative emotions right so to debunk this myth that this is like the ico can be only speculative only like scammy projects let's 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 let, let's try to also understand like you know what do you mean by saying like we want to bring back the ico era we talk about capital formation. So for example, Two Prime has emitted about $350 million of treasury, meaning total capital we can raise, finite number, uh, which is now at 3.50 for the token, starting at three, so let's say 400 mil treasury. Um, we've liquefied some of that on the public market, so now we can go to the private market, which is a lot more reassuring to them because we're already liquid. Also, there's no front running by crypto insiders, which is what the IO has been, right? And that formula works for those markets. 
in a, in a way. And I don't think it was. If you ask me, I think IEO is a little tired too, you know. Uh, but it, it remains that the capital formation's velocities due to the crypto crypto wins also validates everybody, right? Because here I give you my shit coin for your shit coin. Yeah, but at some point we have real value. I mean, let's not forget that we have created a lot of this ab initio, right? That's one of the points I'm making in, in the white paper, if you remember, is that the other thing that's interesting is this is monetary creation uh, ab initio from nothing, yeah, from first principles. So if, if I would apply your principle and would compare it, what's the main difference between the IEO, uh, like initial exchange offering, right, and your model, like that you're doing in two? We, we went to Asian exchanges, and they're all pushing the IEO as a product. Mm -hmm. And the product is basically that uh, we're going to do airdrops, and, uh, and we're going to recruit a network, which is ephemeral on Telegram for a little bit, you know, and it's annoying. And, uh, and then we're going to pump the visibility of it and the network effect is going to go through the community you pay for. Except that works if your token is intrinsically worth it and, and then the worth is actually the community itself. So that it makes sense to run an IEO like this way. So they say, well, you got to pay like 100,000, 200,000, 60,000 of airdrop value. Now that's illegal in the US, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we've seen Ton and, and Telegram just pay the price for that. E the fact that, e yeah. So th there's, there's, there's that that's very interesting is that if you look at the, uh, so what we do is we go public first and then we go private. So we can't do and don't want to do pump and dump. In fact, it works against us, right? We tell these exchanges, look, we can't give you $60,000 worth of our token because that's real dilution on the treasury as claims. We treat it as dollars from the outset because that's what we're going to raise. And so if you account for it this way, again, you know, accounting is an important field of study. If you, if you define it ontologically as my liability is my token, as opposed to treat it like a free thing, I expand on a network. Of course, that's multi-layer marketing. And, so and, in yeah, a way, and it works. It's reverse. It works, yeah. It's a reverse ICO, what you're talking about. Like, so yes, we, yes. So, the, we, we, the so we go to the... Like you're, you're having a token, like you know, what you're, you're offering and in, in your tokenomics, like you're basically, uh, you're talking about public exchanges in a way that you will maintain listings of your tokens on behalf of, you know, like uh, uh, different exchanges. But this, but at the same time, you, you're you controlling, like in, in a way, the liquidity, right? You know, whether the new liquidity comes, right? And... You know, the, you 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 you're never gonna have like you're you're always matching the circulation of the tokens, right? And you know, and w the way uh, I understood what was written, so you've mentioned something interesting: the continuous token offering, right? So that's the reverse ICO model, which is quite interesting and quite innovative, I would say. Uh, and my question to you also would be like, when you uh, when you mention uh, something as Ab initial store of value. If you can help to understand, what do you mean by that? Ab initial means from first principles that we just created out of thin air. Now, all money is created out of thin air, but not all of it. Actually, the debt, what we know as debt, is always backed one one by debt. Uh, so it's an accretive instrument that's fully backed by debt. But mm -hmm. power money, like the Fed uses, which is a different animal altogether, it only exists on. Uh, on the dedicated computers, uh, what, which the Fed accounts run on. Uh, that power money is at a stroke of a, of, a, of a key, and you can create as much as you want. Uh, that's pure ab initio fiat monetary creation, which we're seeing in action right now as an agent of social stabilization, by the way. Um, that exists in no crypto. Assets. That exists what in you're crypto. There's no assets backing them in the beginning, right? That's, that's correct. Okay. And so you're, that build, tells you you're building yeah. a bridge. In a way, you're building a bridge between the traditional finance and uh, the decentralized or DeFi uh, world uh, or open finance, uh, uh, open source financial infrastructure. That's what you're doing and you're helping, in a nutshell, someone like, uh, as I don't know, maybe one day Berkshire Hathaway who, uh, you know, Warren Buffett, uh, you know, like to enter this market even at least like with a, uh, with a small percentage, but like some with, with uh, the, the infrastructure that they would understand, right? And uh, in a way, that's one of the one of the benefits of participating, like you know, in similar projects. And if 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 I summarize it like somehow like more or less accurate to you, please correct me. 
you know, there's definitely a notion of uh, linguistics uh, here. Uh, you know, we, we get to frame the, the discussion, is it, a, is, is it a money, is it a, um, you know, is it a public record, is it an open source database, is it infrastructure, is it philosophically uh, profound? Um, I think the, at a very practical level, you know, what we're doing is a, is a, is a way to invest in, in crypto. Um, that is adapted to your needs. It's a lot of how do you present the product, the linguistics part. How do you match to your target audience? That was to put the money. And there's a linguistic map, um, a mapping from one group to the other. So crypto has a lot of good things about it. Great characteristics, right? Liquidity, velocity, anonymity, international store of value. Volatility can be a plus or a minus, depending on how you want to use it. You know, we think it's a plus, personally, because we get to smooth out the, the in and out. So maintaining liquidity day to day uh, is obviously meaning a map from, from dollars back to your crypto. Because you know, the SPV investor, he doesn't want to get paid back in crypto. He wants to get paid back in dollars. Mm -hmm. We guarantee in crypto the payment, actually. The numerare is going to be the one created. That's the whole point. Okay. And now we go to monetary theory. You know, it's like, how, how do they understand money? How do they want to flow it? And private, there's a lot of private right now. You know, but you got to be aware. You got to be, it's, it's, everybody's afraid. And so mapping to their language, that's what I mean. It's linguistics and pipelines. Um, you know, just, just bring it to the money and, and the money will flow, so to speak. But you got to do that mapping. And so, you know, talking about blockchain and keys and blee and blah, you know. Obviously going on a public market is the key because then you have a ticker symbol and, and, and that's, that's the money making machine for sure. So if we talk about a little bit about his history, like, you know, when, you know, there was a uh, standard bank notes, like in the sort of, like in, in the eyes of the uh, Security and Exchange Commission, like um, just securities, right? And there was, um, the historical monetary methods, uh, which you describe in your white paper, like from 7th century to 1907. And then uh, basically we went to the age of Bretton Woods, right? uh, and it was uh, till 1973. Uh, and then, you know, after like 1973 till now, we oh, basically to 2009 you as you mentioned it like it was still centralized system and and it which it is right now still like globally right uh, but now since 2009 we have an, an alternative like you know the different open uh, open source financial infrastructure that helps to provide the decentralized way of transferring value right so how would you define the, the, the core differences of these different paradigms? And what do you think changed and what do you think, what do you think is still challenging? Well, we can start by the end and then go back to the Templars. <laughs> but um, we're seeing right now in COVID, for example, the usage of QE to directly distribute from the federal uh, computers to your wallet, let's put it this way. That's certainly what China is doing. Uh, those proposals have floated about Washington. Uh, they're talking about $6,000 a citizen. How do you distribute it? You don't want to wait for the signature of some president. You just want to go direct to some wallet. Um, so, you know, it's relevant in, 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 in that aspect today. Uh, and modern monetary theory uh, says, look, if this symbol is completely created, there's a history to the use of capitalism as fractional reserve, various actually. If you go back even to the Bible, it's a, it's a method of payment. And it's a method of payment, but the liquidity needs meaning you store your value, but some of it is gonna be used for payments and the ratio normally needed by the economy is about 7%. So one in 12, which is also a biblical ratio. Um, and so the Templars then put in all right, well, let's take what exists, which is the store of value, and then multiply on top of it. And this is the available financing. Have at it, boys. Just make sure that you pay me back the stuff I created. So I'm not creating ghost symbols. I'm creating real symbols that will activate local economies. We've functioned on that system since post-Bretton Woods. We had to go through the inflation bit, 
But basically, modern economies say, economy, tell us how much you need. That's the commercial banks. Commercial banks tell investment banks how much they need. And the investment banks tell the Fed, oh, new monetary mass creation, blah, blah, blah. They settle that on the overnight repo markets. They don't even need to create. And then the Fed can create actually the symbol that's necessary to sustain this economic activity, call it the power dollar. And the power dollar or power base money is actually completely created out of thin air, but enables the economy. And the only real measure for it is not its intrinsic value, but is the economy repaying its debt or not? Meaning, are we creating bullshit or are we creating real thing out of this money that doesn't exist? It's, it's quite fascinating because I, I see a pattern like, in the community where there's a lot of smart people like yourself, like with a PhD degree like or with great business achievements behind their back. And they're also deeply interested in the topics of, you know, let's say closer like metaphysical context, right? And there's, there's a... Uh, I would say the confluence between people who attend the Burning Man, like, you know, or they attend other like prominent festivals and they read a lot of um, literature. They understand the philosophical structure of the world and they have their own vision of how it works. Uh, why do you think this particular crowd, this niche is like, you know, is united around this idea of decentralization and like changing the world as we see, not only financial world, but how we transfer the data, how we're talking about the privacy, how we're talking about like the value itself? Well, there's two aspects to the question. Uh, one is occult and, and, and one is not. Um, I'll start with the, I think the, the occult connection. I, I, I really love that energy actually in the, in the domain. It's one of the things that attracted me. And as a personal philosophical uh, outview, the greatest trick of the magicians since the Templar has been money and the abstraction of money. Um, and so I like this symbolism uh, that is very present. And I think, you know, there's a lot of people, it, for me in 2011, that was the connection. That, that's how I first heard of Bitcoin was the anonymous underground and Anon, new, new, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, Java. Um, and so the also the occult implications of, of an open source construct. Um, that is the will of the people uh, uh, is, 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 is not lost. It's an interesting. Um, so there's a, a very, um, yeah, there's, there's a lore there that, that is, that is an interesting energy. Um, and then, let, let's, let's bear in mind that this is an open source database that is distributed around the world in operations, meaning uh, we have here a cache construct, meaning a memory RAM, uh, memory replication, in memory replication of the record, so that we can trust the cloud to have a, a cryptographically enforced version that can be hacked by no government or by no corporation. Let's not lose sight of the fact that the birth of Bitcoin was with drugs and, and Silk Road. Uh, and in fact, that's what it's proven that it can do. And today you have many other currencies chasing the same category. But, you know, basically we have an unhackable data structure. And I remember very vividly the Gates versus Stallman. Uh, uh, and it's about somewhere the who owns what. And obviously, nobody owns the internet infrastructure. The open source runs the, the internet, right? And vice versa, the internet gave birth to open source. And so here's this thing that's under control of the people. Anybody can run it. Um, and uh, this thing basically says, I'll hold data that no one can hack. Oh, and we can represent medical data. We can represent voting data. We can represent money. And it doesn't suck. Um, you know, so at first layer, we go like, this is a simpler way to invest. We are steadily growing through the crisis. We commit to maintaining liquidity in the market, even though it's a lot of SPV for private. Um, yeah, and, uh, and we, we did what we said we were going to do, you know, three months ago. We got hit by the, by the crisis. Learning as a team has been a very interesting experience for the entrepreneurs who listen to you, I think. The lesson is always, even though I'm a repeat entrepreneur and success, lucky enough to be successful the first time, um, you know, you always learn by mistake, you always learn by, by rapid failing, by always being aware of what's going on. 
And so the mindset of uh, some meditation and, and chaotic expectations like the Buddhists, for example, uh, are easier mental constructs to manage what's going on in a, in a startup, meaning shit's going to happen, deal with it. And, and, and that state of mind, you know, we got guys in U.S., Asia, um, you know, so work from home is totally natural. And we do this every day. This is how I work. Um, you know, so that energy is, is, is fun. And I, I love the mix of, 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 you know, the occult energy. Yeah, this is almost a church of space construct for me. Like future of money, what is it? And, you know, are we saying something to the future of data like Napoleon did, you know, records on, on paper and that was la carte d'identité. Uh, but so the trust in the records is indeed an open source construct. And I think open source um, makes it even more important. It's important, like, yeah. And now we're talking about the data itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you own your data? Okay, well, like you own your bank account. Okay, we got that. So nobody can hack your bank account. All right, so that's uh, international store value that doesn't suck right there. Except it's very volatile. So how can we smooth that out? Well, we've got stable coins. Well, stable coins are great, but they're stable coins. You know, so how do you break the, the thing here? You know, you, you go to the so basically, you created something like in between the, the highly volatile. It's a, it's a hybrid, yeah. It's a hybrid. Which, so is why li which is why linguistically it's so hard to explain to a lot of, to a lot of crypto heads. Right? No, you they see, eventually to... within one hour, we, we achieved it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, but for but for New York guys, it's a natural category. It's like, yeah, 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 hybrid, yeah, hybrid cash. The so hybrid is a synthetic model, like in between the crypto, like highly volatile, highly speculative crypto asset, which can change price, you know, like 20 30 percent per day, right? And a stable coin that is like, like as you mentioned, very stable, but it like it is the opposite of the volatility. But there is no like the upside potential or downside. Like you know, there is like it's just like a very very stable to to similar to dollar in a sense right and i don't want to even compare it because if we go there it's, it's a separate topic but uh that's why people prefer like stable coins and there's a huge increase in using uh stable coins like everywhere uh, in the industry and uh, actually a lot of traditional businesses um, are getting into this um, uh opportunities to transfer value and transfer so to speak, m money uh, uh, across border, like you know, everywhere in the world, is definitely uh, very interesting and uh, innovative in a way. And uh, I know it's not easy to basically be like the pioneers of this something completely new, right? But I know the people like you, who's you know, like who's already done it in, and and were successful uh, in one, I would say, domain and, uh, made it like big. And now I'm sure you're going to do it uh, again. And, uh, I sincerely wish you success in this. I think you, while, while you're doing that, you're going to teach a lot of other, uh, people in the industry that it is possible and it can literally bring a lot of benefits to the, uh, just the entire ecosystem. And that is important. Like, uh, that's not only your personal success and, uh, it's also going to be a success of the industry, which I wish you like, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of, uh, as I say, bon chance, right? To abundance. As I would like to say every meeting we end with uh, to abundance. Thank you.